Hey there, it's Marty with Digital Design Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to make some die lines and uh, you know work with them once they've been made. And we'll do it for a couple of things. You have a box uh, idea and a sticker, like a label type of thing. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is we're going to want to do this on a separate layer. So you have your layers palette here. You, you open that by going uh, here, by the way, but mine's already open. Um, and let's say we're going to make today we're going to make a little shoebox. So I already have a large page here, 30 inches by 30 inches, because boxes are big when they're folded flat. So let's say uh, we're going to make the front part of the box, the one that you would normally see. Like first, um, I'm going to make it nine inches wide and five inches tall. Sounds about right. Okay, now we've got that guy. That's that's what you the front, and this will make sense in a second if it doesn't make sense right now. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste this thing, but I'm gonna do a quick version of that by holding Option, clicking and dragging. See that? Let me make another one. Hold Shift, it'll go in a straight line. But yeah, so now we have the back is what we're gonna call that. And next we're gonna make the top of a box. Same thing. Let's say I want the top to be, of course, the same width, but I want it to be 12 inches uh, long. So I'm going to, you see up here, you can transform it here. Um, this gives you a lot more options. And you, you also go here uh, to your window and you pull down to transform to get, pull this full palette up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make that 12 inches. There we go. I'm going to drag this down. See, I have these guides going. Um, see, how it showed me it snapped right to it. So you can do that as well. And view smart guides and snap to point, stuff like that. Just play with all those and, yeah, they can help you a lot. So now we've got the top, uh, front and the back, and we need some sides. So same thing. And we're going to make those uh, the same height as these. So five inches this one I will uh, do it up here five inches oops oh there we go this is something you want to see notice that these are linked together so you break that link that way it does it proportionally there we go and one more again I'm holding option and clicking and dragging and it uh, copies it while I do it. So now you can kind of see this looks like the lid of a shoebox that is flattened out, which is how they're going to do it. And you know what? We might as well do this right because this is going to come up. Add these little flaps that they're going to they're going to fold over once it's printed on. So uh, let's just make these guys an inch. You'll see what I mean in just a second, okay? One more there. there. An inch. And one more. Boom. These would be the little flaps you'd see. You probably want to. I'm going to use the direct select tool here so I can grab just that point. And I'm going to scoot them in. You can mess with it like that. I'm doing little nudges here, but you can also just uh, hold shift and do bigger ones. I'm sure if you're aware of you know anything that has to do with a sh type of display or packaging box, you've seen something like this. This is in the inside. You know They're going to print on all this, and then they're going to fold that over. But I'm sure you can see a box taking shape here. At least I hope you can. Otherwise, I'm not doing a very good job explaining this. So, all right. Now, let's take it to where we're going to start laying artwork on this thing. Right now, we have what you'd consider a die line. Uh, they would fold this thing up, fold these little flaps over, and uh, you know, form the lid of a box, but... Obviously, they're going to need to print on it. So we have layer one here, right? Again, always, all your palettes are in here. 
So we go to layers, but I already have it open. Um, double click on that, let's call it dye line. Now, we're going to make this so we can see it. Notice right now it has a white fill and a black stroke or outline. So I'm going to have uh, no fill. So I'll go up here and do it. I could do that also here. And as far as uh, the stroke, let's make it something we can see uh, with with artwork you know, on it. So I made it blue. Actually, it looks like you can't see it, but you will in a second. Uh, for the sake of this, you want these you know, to be thin, but for the sake of this demonstration so we can see it nice, I'm going to beef it up just a little. And uh, yeah, the other thing here, we're going to want to lock this. You lock this layer, and uh, look at that. See, I can't touch it. And now we're going to make a new layer. You see, uh, pops up here. I'm going to name it Artwork. And right now, uh, that is on top of the dye lines, which you don't want to drag it below it. Now you got the dye lines on top and Artwork on the bottom. Now I can show you, this is going to be pretty cool. Let's say we're going to make our box, I don't know, red. Let's make a red box. I'm going to nix the stroke here. And there we go. We got a red box now. See that? They can print on a big piece and they can cut this out. Um, and just so we can you know, be a little more detailed here. Let's say uh, you know, you're obviously laying this out for something, so let's go with, uh, I'm just going to type brand name. I want to make that a little bigger. My zoom tool, just press Z. And uh, make things easier, these little keyboard shortcuts, but okay, brand name. And grab the rectangle tool. Hopefully this is starting to look like a shoebox to you. It's at least the flattened lid version. There would be something like a label. You know, you'd probably want to grab this. See, oh, I'm going to show you this too. I, I just clicked and now I have this. That's annoying after a while if you're really, you know, putting this logos and whatnot all over the place and you keep clicking on this background. So we don't do that. This is another version of locking, but it's a little different. Go to object. Lock selection, because I had selected it. Now I can't do that, but it's not like locking the whole layer, because I can still mess with this stuff, which is on the same layer. And you know, if you want to unlock it, just unlock all. That'll unlock everything that's, that is locked. So, uh, yeah. so let's uh, do the option drag thing again. Bring this over here. I'm going to... You can press uh, E, which is the free transform tool of this guy. Watch this. Turn this guy around. I held shift. That made it does in increments of, uh, you know, like 45, 90 degrees, stuff like that. Uh, so now we've got our labels there. Let's say uh, we wanted to make a logo. So we're going to, uh, you know, grab this guy. Make a circle, let's say. I'm going to hold shift so it becomes a perfect circle. And make that black, let's say. Type out logo. And make it nice and big, make it white, so you can see it. And now you have the lid of a shoebox or any type of box, and and these are the die lines. So, you know, we made them to size the size we wanted, five inches tall, twelve inches uh, long. In this instance, and nine inches wide here. So, you know, those are all uh, important details because if you are working with a die line that you're going to have something manufactured or, you know, sampled or just for any reason, really, you want to make it the actual size. So remember that transform palette, you know, even your label. You want that thing to be a certain size, you got it right here. You know, see, that's supposed to be five and a half inches. You know. Five, clean it up, you know, get it perfect, and 
Let's say one and a quarter. Now we've got a perfect you know, 5.5, 1.25 inch square or label or whatever you want to, whatever you're going to put at the area. Yeah. And uh, yeah, same goes for, for these. You can transform anything here and your die lines, you can't touch them. This is what you'd want to send to the whoever's going to actually make this thing for you. A, a box supplier of some sort. And so now let's uh, move on to the next. It's going to be doing it for a sticker or label or whatever. I'm going to uh, grab this. We'll use this for the example. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make a new document here. And I didn't mean to do that. And let's just use a smaller page this time. I'm going to paste that. Oh, wow. Look at that. Nice and clear and big. So say this is a, let's make a sticker die line. Same principle. You really don't need to do it on different layers. I mean, of course you can. It just depends on what you, what, what the output is actually going to be. But let's, uh, I'm going to make a slightly more complicated one. And, you know, yeah, let's leave it low. I was going to call it sticker. And yeah, let's just call it sticker for clarity's sake. Make this, uh, let's go with red. You can see it. Sticker. And then, you know, let's say that you've got, yeah, this, this black guy back here, the circle. There, you know what? I'm going to just do something real quick. There. Hmm. Looks like Japan. I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Hello, if you're watching from Japan. This is for you. Anyways, uh, okay. So, a little smaller. I'm not doing the size thing yet. You, you learned that a second ago, but you know you could also make this any size you want here. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to create outlines on this text so it's not no longer a font because. Yeah, that's a little annoying with some of the stuff that we're going to be doing uh, in a minute. You don't want that. So let's go to type and create outlines. And well, now it's shapes. It's not a font anymore. So we're going to make a die line. Say we're going to print this on a clear sticker and you want a little border around it. And that's the big guy right there. That's probably you know, one of the toughest uh, things to you know figure out on your own. I'm going to align those in the center just for the sake of doing that correctly so we're gonna make a small border around this whole thing there's a couple ways we can do it um, but this is the most straightforward approach uh, first we're gonna do an offset path so I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna go to path and we're going to offset it let's go with uh, you know uh, let's go with three millimeters just for the sake of showing you that you can just type in millimeters even if it was on inches and it knows what you're talking about it's a computer it's smart so we're going to just use that so see what I did there we just made it a little bigger now there's a couple of ways we can do this guy this is one way let's say that we just wanted a you know, just to cut around the S, but not like super detailed, but just a rough, you know, I guess you call it a rough cut, but that's not really right. But anyways, I've got these two guys here. See that? Boom and boom. I'm going to select both of them. You can also select by one and then hold shift and select the other guy. And what we're going to use is the Pathfinder. Again, as usual, Pathfinder. Go to Window, pull up the Pathfinder. We're going to use the Unite option. See that? Boom. Now we've got this. It looks nice. Um, except, you know, maybe these rough, uh, I mean, these straight corners aren't really ideal. So what we're going to do here is, you know, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to show you two days. You can get the direct select tool, and it will give you these, you know, round corners. See that? Ooh. And it even shows you there, you know, 
how much you are rounding them if you need to do it numerically. But there's a e e even easier way to do this. Well, more accurate way. You see the, uh, I mean, that's that's good right there. If, if you wanted to cut your sticker out like that, then, you know. You but I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Let's go uh, here. Let's make a box here. Now, if this is just more accurate, you know, um, like I've shown in, in the other examples, uh, like let's say we, you know, we wanted this guy to be 8.5 inches wide. It's a big sticker, obviously, and uh, you know, yeah, watch this. Let's lock that and go 5.5. Yeah, now we have a five, five and a half tall. Eight and a half wide sticker, and let's numerically do this. I'm gonna go uh, stylize effect, stylize round corners. Um, let's go with half an inch. Sounds good to me. Preview. There we go. So we got perfect half inch. You, know, you can change it. You can type in whatever you want. Yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, now we've got that, and then we're gonna go up here. Uh, object path oh you know what I forgot is if you do apply round corners to the circle which doesn't have corners it's not really gonna work and if I combined those two it would here, I'll show you it uh, it will uh, combine them with something actually you don't want to do so let's switch those watch this you can't round corners or something that doesn't have corners so you had messed it up. I mean, it does actually. It, it starts at the anchor point here, so let's not do that. Let's expand this. Expand ap appearance. And now it doesn't realize that it has an effect on it. And see that? See that? Now these guys, we can just you know throw a little bit of... Oh, whoops. I just want to do one corner. And that one. I'm using the direct select. Always... Direct select if you just want to grab one path. It's really something that you're going to, if you really get involved in Illustrator, I almost always just use the uh, uh, direct select tool because you just get right to the point, literally. Yeah, so there you have that. There's a die line yet again. And you, know, you can indicate that or you know, if say you're making a sticker and you want to uh, make it clear, you know, the best way to do that is uh, throw a little background on there. Um, I'm going to swap these by hitting Shift X. See that? And let's make it, uh, you know, look a little bit clear. Uh, and a blue, I'm going to pull up transparency. Pull it down to like you know, 20 or something. You know, that way it gives it like a little. You know, you can even write on it, you know, clear background, whatever. Move it to the back. Yeah. And you can lock it, like I showed you before. Lock. Selection. Boom. And there you go. Yeah. Die line, clear sticker, clear background, so on and so forth. So, I hope that helped. Uh, let me know in the comments. Yeah. If it did, or if you got any more questions, uh, and feel free to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with any new videos. And thanks for watching.